Ah, rows of Sharon. Hey guys, it's Phil from SmilingGardener.com. If you haven't checked out my free online organic gardening course, you can do that right on the homepage of SmilingGardener.com. Today is a beautiful day to be talking about natural organic fertilizers. If you were to compare an organic fertilizer with a conventional chemical fertilizer, the organic often doesn't look like that great a value because the NPK numbers are usually very low. But organic has a number of benefits. Often it's gonna have many more nutrients than just NPK, but more important to me is First of all, it's not toxic, which means it's not gonna kill your soil life, which is a good thing. Also, it's often better to apply lower doses of nutrients anyway. Like if you're applying a 20-20-20, that's really hard on your soil and on your plants. So there are a number of different benefits to organic. First thing I really wanna mention is what is organic. In this context, it really just means anything that we are allowed to use in our organic garden we often get these rules from organic farming because they have all these standards laid out. And now for the last few years, we've had the sole organic standard for urban gardens too. So you can follow the sole S-O-U-L standard. So if you're looking for something, you really want something organic. If it says organic based, that really probably means it's mostly chemical. If it says natural or environmentally friendly, those are not bad words, but they're not regulated, so they really don't mean anything. So it's okay if it says that, but you don't want to pick your fertilizer based on that. When in doubt, if you really don't know much about reading ingredients, you can go for something that's OMRI listed, which is right there. OMRI listed. And that says it's allowed to be used in organic farming. I often divide fertilizers in my head into two groups. And the first is mineral fertilizers. That means rocks, basically, different kinds of rocks, like calcitic limestone or a glacial rock dust. These are what I think of as being the main soil builders. You put them in your soil, over the course of many years they break down and they provide the essential nutrients for your soil and for your plants. Most of these need to be applied based on that soil test that we did. And since most people don't do soil tests, you really don't want to apply many of them. For example, I have one right here that's a beautiful product. It's called rock phosphate. This one's granulated. You can see it there. It contains mainly calcium and phosphorus. It's wonderful stuff, but only if you need calcium and phosphorus. Now, a lot of us do, but if you don't, it's not gonna be something you wanna add. So most mineral fertilizers, we don't wanna be adding. If you can find a glacial rock dust, that's the one you can add without doing any testing, because it has a broad range of nutrients. So that's all right. Another issue with the mineral fertilizers is they can be pretty hard to find. If you're a hardcore organic gardener like me and you don't mind looking for them and finding a store, tracking them down, that's all right. But they're too expensive to ship from long distances and sometimes it takes some work to find them. So that's a little bit of an issue. And that's why I love the other group of fertilizers, which I call the biological fertilizers, where the mineral fertilizers are the rocks. The biological is basically anything that was once alive and it's now being turned into some kind of a fertilizer. So very briefly, I'll mention that a lot of the biological fertilizers we used to use in organic gardening, I don't use anymore because they're being derived from genetically modified plants. That's like cottonseed meal and canola meal and all kinds of things like that. Now I'm very strict on this compared to a lot of organic gardening experts. Uh, a lot of people still advocate it. The organic standards don't allow it, so I just, I don't use it. And I don't want to support the genetic modification movement, so I use other things. So um, I'll tell you what I do use. If you're wondering why I dance around so much in all my videos, it's because I drink a lot of tea. That's a kelp product. Wonderful, full of nutrients, full of natural growth hormones, really wonderful stuff for foliar feeding your plants. Um, Along the same lines is a fish fertilizer. I don't tend to use that anymore because there are sustainability issues around it, but it is a really great fertilizer, especially for nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, other one right from your own home is molasses. It's a wonderful foliar fertilizer. It brings all kinds of vitamins and sugars for your microbes. My favorite one, I'm gonna talk about this stuff more in the future, but my favorite one is ocean water. This happens to be a product that's very concentrated ocean water where most of the sodium chloride has been removed. But um, I'm gonna talk about these more another time, but there are all these products, a lot of them come from the ocean. Um, you know, this sea minerals technically isn't a biological, but I kind of lump it in with the biologicals that you can use without any kind of a soil test. They bring in dozens, sometimes 80 plus nutrients. They're not gonna cause any imbalances. They're great to use. You can sign up for my free online course at smilinggardener.com. If you're on YouTube, you can subscribe to get more videos. If you're on Facebook, you can like me. If you're somewhere else, you can high five me or whatever it is you do on all these different social media sites. I'll see you next time.